The following content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. It does not constitute means for diagnosis, healthcare advice, nor treatment. Make use of a qualified healthcare professional for such purposes. under your correlation matrix. And that just explains um, the actual numbers for the correlated relationship. And then after we've done that, we're also going to complete our regression table and then our scatter plots. And as you see, these all add up accordingly and they're worth, they'll be worth 10 points. <laughs> go to file where it says import data. Once you're there, we're just going to go to this top bar where it says Excel, click on that and find where your Excel file is. And then you'll hit OK and wait a second for the field to populate. So first go to analyze, descriptive statistics, then go to descriptives. You should have this box pop up with two and you're going to move these to the so second box. What we're going to do here is we're just going to click off minimum and maximum. So the only thing we need here are the means and the standard deviation. So you'll just hit continue, hit OK. And this is the output that you just created from your descriptive analysis. And um, as you can see, it lists your variables along with the sample size, the mean, and the standard deviation. This is exactly what we want. What you're going to do is create a Word document, copy this table to your Word document because that will contain all of your tables as well as your scatter plots. So first we'll go back to analyze. We're going to go to correlate and bivariate. All right, once you click that, this window should pop up. Is everyone good so far? Okay, so what you need to do is if you have Excel files that contain a different columns, which I noticed, make sure you only include your trait variable and your two facets. So if you have the participant column, do not include that. You'll only need those three variables. And then you don't need to do anything for options. So we are just going to hit OK, and this will pop out our second table. So we have our descriptive table, and now after you run that um, correlation analysis, you'll have this table pop up onto your output as well. This is your correlation matrix, and it shows the correlations between each of the variables. What we want to look at, and this is specific to your variables, but it's the same process, the same structure, 
you want to look at this first section because the way that we read this, this is the correlation. And you can see that domestic violence has a significant positive correlation to conscientiousness. And you can see that with alcohol use, there is a significant negative correlation between that variable and conscientiousness. And when you apply these, not only quantitatively, how do these statistics look, but also think about it in terms of practicality, it should line up. For example, with conscientiousness, it makes sense that in certain geographic areas of the United States specifically, because this is where that data was collected, the more conscientious you are, there are other associated values, traditionalism, you know, family values, being able to uphold those. So if you have a high conscientiousness, there's also a risk of having higher domestic violence rates because you are so um, conscientious, you're so inflexible to those rules, you have to abide by them, that it's much easier to create that tension which leads to domestic violence. And same with alcohol use, the more conscientious you are, the less likely you are to engage in alcohol drinking behavior. So that's the kind of process you should follow when you're thinking about your variables relationships. So you'll want to have all of these copied to your Word document, the descriptive table, and the correlation matrix. <laughs>
And we're going to go here to regression. Once you're at that spot, you'll go here to linear, and you're going to click on that. So the dependent variable is going to be conscientiousness with the dependent variable, and we're going to take these regressions one step at a time. So what I want to emphasize here is that regression lines are only done when we have a significant correlation. So I know some of you guys had variables that had no correlation. You don't need to worry about doing a regression line with those, okay? You only need to do a regression line for the significant variable, whether that's positive or negative. So that's the reason why we had you guys have at least one. If you have both come out as significant, you have to do two regression lines. So let's see. So the trait will be the independent variable. The facet will function as the dependent variable. So your box should look like this. Let me check options. We're good. So you're just going to click OK here. And this will pop up your tables. What we want to look at here is the coefficient. All right, so for the output, you'll have multiple tables um, pop up, but the main thing you want to look at here is the coefficients, because this is how you're going to write your regression line equation. So you'll have the y-intercept and the slope being the most important parts of those equations, and I'll show you that in just a second. So this constant, that operates as the y-intercept. The slope is the second line with the trait variable. So this is exactly what you need to look at when you have, when you're focusing on your regression table. You want the y-intercept and the slope because you're going to put underneath that regression table your equation of regression line, which is what this is. So as you can see here, the slope goes in this location and the y-intercept goes here. So that's all you have to do there. So as you can see, y equals 0.730x, which we get from the extroversion, plus 6.382, which is the constant. So the reason this is important is because the regression line um, visualizes the direction of your correlation, of your relationship between those variables. And that is an important part of your scatter plot. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to make scatter plots, which represent the correlation, the relationship between your trait variable and the facets. So first thing you want to do is highlight your trait variable. Um, use control shift or shift and press the arrow key so it highlights the two columns beside each other. You should have your trait variable and your first facet highlighted. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to go to insert and go to this button right here where it says scatter. We're going to use the first one. Okay. So now, just right click on the edge so that we can move the chart. You're going to want to have this scatter plot move to a new sheet. So make sure that you um, enable that and title it um, violence and apply. something to that effect. You'll hit OK, and you'll see that this pops out to a separate tab. So now what we're going to do is all stylistic. So first, 
we're going to toggle off the chart title and have the axis title. So your trait variable should be on the X axis. So I believe mine was, I think it was conscientiousness. And then domestic violence. So you'll have your facet as the title for the Y axis. Okay. Once you have that, we're going to go back to chart elements, which is signaled by this cross. We're going to toggle off the grid lines. So it will just be this white space behind the scatter plot. Okay. Okay, so now we're just going to adjust the font size so that it's more readable. And we'll set it to 20. Okay, so what you need to do here is just double click on the markers and that will pop up this right hand bar format data series. And we'll use this to make the markers black. So double click on the markers switch to this paint can on the very left. Once you're there, you'll see that it's on this side, but just go to marker and click on that. We are going to change the fill to black. And we're also going to change the border down here to black as well. So it should look like this. So now that we have the symbol markers changed, the last thing we need to do is create our regression line. That's the very last thing. So what we're going to go back to is chart elements, go to the very last option where it says trend line, check mark that, and then you see this arrow, you're going to click that. So once you have that, we're going to go to more options, and scroll all the way down to the bottom. Here, we are just going to toggle these last two options, display equation on chart, and display the R squared value on the chart. Yes, you just need um, these last two, display equation on chart and display R squared value on chart. And so, you should have this, so you should have this place somewhere readable. Um, you can make it bigger. And also when you create your scatter plot and you have this equation, you can use that as kind of a reference um, when you write your stat notation on the Word document for your equation of regression line, because you can see it lists the R squared already for you. And you should have a line. If you have one of your variables come out as no correlation, it should be a relatively flat line, meaning that there is no relationship between the um, variable on the x-axis and the y-axis. It should be completely flat. But as you can see here, since there is a positive, a significant positive correlation between domestic violence and conscientiousness, you can see that upward slope from left to right. So that is illustrating um, the line of best fit. You're seeing this positive correlation visualized. So that is the first scatter plot. Now we're gonna do the second scatter plot for your second variable, and it is the exact same process. Your scatter plots also should be copied and pasted to the Word document. 
this is just an easy way to have everything organized together. For now, we're going back to our sheet and we're going to create our second scatter plot. So here, it was easy to create the scatter plot for the first one because they're side by side, but we need to copy the trait variable column and the second. So what you want to do here is control and then click on the second one. So you can see that they're both highlighted. Then you're going to go to insert and you'll click on this first scatter plot, the same one. So that's what that should look like. And it's just the same thing. We'll right click on the edge and make this into a new sheet, which I will label elk new scatter plot. So same thing, Let's go ahead and uncheck the grid lines as well as the chart title. And we're going to check mark the axis titles, which we'll label again the x axis being the trait variable that you have, and the y axis as your facet, your second facet. And we'll just increase the size of the axis titles to 20. And then we'll double click on the symbol marker again so that it will pop up that, that menu, the format data series menu on the right hand side. And then we're going to go to the paint can and go to marker where we'll make the fill black and we'll make the border black as well. Okay, so we're going to create that trend line once again for the second scatter plot by going to chart elements where we'll check my trend line, the last option, and go to the little arrow right beside it where it says more options. Here we'll scroll all the way to the bottom and check mark display equation on chart and display R squared value on chart. And you'll just move that to a readable location. So this is your second scatter plot completed. We are officially done with all of the steps for this lab. So if you guys have issues, now is a good time to let me know so I can see and we'll walk through it together.